there we have uh, like a Toyota Prado. So I'll just spend your like years 2016 like, uh, 17 to your uh, current year at the moment, 2022. So this is what your current head unit will like, look like. Uh, this is a GXL model, so basically it's got reverse camera only, hasn't got any other rear screen or anything. The steering wheel controls can see what the current head unit does. So you get that every time, which is a bit annoying. Takes a while to like to boot up. Obviously, you get your like, basic like Bluetooth here. Get your app, GPS. I uh, get your information about your obviously sort of trip computer information. And there's your setup in there. So that's just like showing you some like settings it has. So our head units um, will keep these same settings as well, and you can get into them as well. But it's just like showing you basically what you have there. Let's cover what you get in the kit. So obviously, you've got your main unit here. Obviously, fairly really straightforward. All built in like fascia. So I'll pin out in the top here if you need it. Probably won't like this. I need it though. It's all plug and play. So you get your 20 pin main plug. You get your GPS screw in one. The Wi-Fi screw in one. Like if your antenna and AM and your auxiliary plugs. We call that just when we're talking about to help you out. Then you also get uh, your trim removal tools, OBD2 a scan tool, a quick charge USB port. So obviously you can just uh, go into like a panel and you get a quick charge and a pass for a USB. Uh, two easy adapter kits, so only one of these will fit. So you can you can pretty much tell which one's got like, to match up to your car by the plugs. A CAN bus port, CAN bus module, sorry. So if you aren't using like this one, but you're like, you are using the other one, you just need to uh, swap the CAN bus over onto this one. So just unplug some here and like plug into this one. Wi-Fi antenna, which is like sort of a rectangle one. You can just leave it like floating behind the unit. It's a like, GPS, we'll mount that above the unit, give it clear view of the sky so a factory usb a port retention cables just so you can retain your factory usb port a two usbs that plug into the auxiliary plug there and external microphone i like amplifier i like pre-outs for, for like aftermarket like amps so you won't need this for this install a third usb port that's uh, handy if you want to use our dash cam or our 4g modem again auxiliary in this has a brown plug on it majority of people won't use this but so the main reason you might use it, it does give you an extra video input so for like a third camera for example and uh, like audio if you want uh, audio uh, from a a camera that's on a caravan or something. Uh, this one here is a reverse camera cable, so this is like, very important. So this has to uh, be obviously like, plugged in. This purple one here, it says cam in, or uh, plug into our main harness. A USB update, a file, it's like blank, but if you ever do need a, a like, sort of, like update the firmware on your unit, you can use this. And there is like, a warning in here, if you like, do get a check light, but we already have like this unplugged in a harness, but it's just a check. So it's if your check engine like, does come on when you put it into reverse, it's just because uh, it's like to send the wrong uh, signal through. So when you put it back in the park at all, I clear itself and it'll be fine once you unplug that. But we have it unplugged in our harness anyway, so you don't have to actually worry about this. So that's everything that's in the kit. Now, good things about like Prados is they are like a pretty easy install. So the first thing you do here is just grab your trim tool that comes in your kit. If you have your door open, you hear the beeping sound, you can actually just uh, press the door rubber sensor and it'll like, stop it beeping. Um, so you just want to put your trim tool underneath here. Lever this here up. So it's also handy to get all your fingers in there. And you'll see that just the aircon panel just pops off like that. Fairly straightforward. So that comes off, unplug that. Then under here you've got one, two, three, uh, four 10 more bolts that need to come out. So you can see the two on this side. One, two. So we'll take out those and then go from there. Now obviously once you've taken out the four of those, just want to stick your hand under it into the top and just give it a, a few I'd sort of tugs on both sides and you'll hear it'll actually like pop out you can actually pull the whole unit out then the back here you can obviously see we've got quite a few plugs so the majority of these plugs you need to push a tab down on top and then pull them out so we'll go through and pull all these out you can see that's the old unit taken out there you can see that it's all pretty quick and easy and then you can see hope for these plugs here and what i was talking about there is you've got to push the tab down on top on most of them so push that down and then pull out so they'll all pretty much have a tab on them that you have to push down and you can see all our plugs here now some of these we won't use when we put our next head unit in so just the ones that like match up we use and like the reason for that is like some of these are gps our units has its own gps or dab again we have our own dab antenna so that's why not all the plugs are used so just cover everything in the kit here obviously you get like your main like head unit here Back here we've got our auxiliary plugs we call them. Now the first thing I want to do is just want to like, sort of test everything that's working on the head unit and everything's like fine. So obviously grab the easy adapter kit you need. There's obviously like two in this kit so it's uh, pretty easy to tell on oh, this one because there's the big plugs. Um, if you are using the other one just make sure the change of canvas are over. Basically need that. And then what you got to do here, this is sort of how simple it is, you just got to go through and I'll match these up. So we're only going to plug into other, obviously the ones I can plug into so you don't have to uh, worry about like that too much can't put them in the wrong spot Let's see, that's the FM antenna one this one's going to go into there maybe that's for that one and you can see we've actually used all the plugs apart from like these two and like, one of these is DOB antenna and the other one was like GPS so these aren't like needed so you can actually like, take these back out of the way so 
Once that's all been plugged in, what you want to do here is you want to check you've got these two yellow RCAs coming off, but one of them is going to go back to a, a plug that oh, it's a, it's a, it's not been plugged into anything, so don't worry about that one. But this other one here is actually plugged in, so we want to grab that. I'm going to grab this cable here, you're going to plug that into the purple cam in, like that, and then this is going to go into the back of a hydrant as well. So this one into here, FM antenna, just so we have some sound for our little test here, goes into here, make sure you push it in correctly, and then this plugs into here. The main 20 pin plug. Then all you want to do really is just turn the car on at the full ACC lights and like make sure the head unit like powers up. I'm just going to check a couple things here. So you only see this uh, screen the first time it powers up. Like apart from that, like once it's uh, been like, powered up before, well, you'll see in the video that it actually quick boots and it takes about like, four seconds to boot up. So you see we get information from the car because it's uh, telling us both doors are open. Do a scan of the radio. So we've got sound coming through. Steering wheel controls here, you can see are working. And then the last thing we just want to check here is just want to put the car into reverse and just see that like something obviously comes up here. So that's not what we want to see. Plugged into that one that was going actually nowhere. Um, so put it into reverse like it's not now and you'll see I've oh, got a reverse camera and then we've, and we've got a, like a parking sensors and everything looks showing there. If I move the steering wheel you can you can obviously see, I see that the tracking's working for the steering wheel there. So off the old face shot right now, obviously I'll pull it back out after you've done your test. There's a couple of things that come off, obviously these uh, clips here have to, have to come off. So you can see there's a few around here. So you can, uh, I just put a screwdriver on either side of those and like pop them off. Just careful if you're doing like one side, they can like flick off and you might like lose one. So just like put your hand over it. And then obviously like the air convents need to obviously come out. So you can see there is small little tabs and here you've got a, a bend back as you do it. So you just get a couple uh, screwdrivers in there to do that. I'll film and like show you what I did here, but after doing a few, like sort of few of these, I think the easiest way like, to uh, do it is to put uh, like pressure on like, the front of it and then put like pressure on as you like, sort of pop the tabs out. So you can see there's a tab there, so pop that one out like so as you put pressure on it and you'll see it will stay popped out. And then do that like the top one like next. And then obviously come down here and do like this one. And then there's also one in here. So obviously keep like pressure on the front as you do it. And then like change your hand around the front and press on the front of this vent and do your final one, two, uh, three. And like that's the easiest way to get them out. So you actually need one screwdriver to get them out and it's actually like not too hard if you do it that way. You see it just comes out like that. Onto our video here in like frame so that you just obviously copy these with that one. So that like red one came off there and our two yellow ones came off here and here. So push those back on. Make sure they clip in right. Those are on now. And then we've got our, our air convents obviously. So they go in the exact same way they came out. So just make sure you get these uh, brackets into the slots and just like, press them in. You can see they're all pushed in now and you can see all these tabs here. This one hadn't clicked in. If they don't click in like that, just give it a bit of a push down and push with your hand. I'll do it uh, like, as it's sitting up because I don't put too much of like, force down onto the actual unit. But you can see obviously it's all looking pretty good from the front and everything's all working fine. So we're all good to put the unit in now so we can start like the GPS. All this like needs to have is a clear view of the sky. So it has obviously a stick pad on here. But so like, basically what you want to do is you just want to push it back in here and like, mount it on a flat piece underneath the dash. So like, for the GPS obviously needs like this like, flat spot to stick onto and there's quite a lot of like, ribs on these dashes. Um, so actually if you go all the way under here, you'll see there's a bit of a flat spot about here. And you can sort of obviously like, push on the top and push on the bottom as you stick it on. Um, so that's where that, like, so I, that's where that, we can put it somewhere else if you can find like, another good uh, like, flat spot. But that's just an option for you. Obviously you're going to get a good clear view of the sky from there. Leave this tied up a bit or tuck it out because you only need that to come back to here. Wi-Fi antenna can just float and loose behind the unit. So like, basically, like, basically like, leave it as it is. Now, in our kits, we do include a quick charge port here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how you put, how you put uh, the quick charge port in. So you, you've got the switch here, so it's going to give you a pass for USB and a quick charge. So there's a couple options. You can put it obviously like sort of down here. If, you, if you're going to go down here, that's cool. Or you can go up here. So two trim tools into a top and a bottom of these and like leave them out. It can be a bit of a pain, but just get a trim tool in the top and one in the bottom and then just sort of like lever and pull it out and you'll eventually end out with it popped out. Obviously we just want to tuck our like, cables in through the hole and pull them right back out here first. And you see you'll pop those through, you can just like I'll grab them with your hand in the back here and you end up with obviously a USB one and a red and black one. Then what we can do is we can obviously push that back into its clip there and you have a nice uh, tidy dual USB uh, port uh, sticking in there with a quick charge in the, on like, the red and a pass through to our head unit on the black.
Yeah, well, what we include here is actually just a tap one. So it obviously turns two into a sort of three on each side. So what we do is our, our red wire here is our ACC feed. So we're going to chop that, like sort of strip it, and put it into like a red in here. And then we have a ground floating loose still. We can use that ground into the blue side on this one. And then we're going to hook our two little wires into there. So that's all that we use here. And we're going to sort of uh, tap off our hedging our power. You can tap off a different uh, power source if you have. You just want to like, use an ACC uh, power source for that USB. So you can see I've cut off these two and strip them. And the ground here. In the future, we will actually try to um, get an extra ACC uh, in our main harness, so we can just use that. So what we're going to do is we're going to slide that into here, clip it down, slide the ground into here, clip it down, slide that into our like, red side here, clip it down, grab our power from here, we've got obviously power and ground here, into one of these ones. Clip it down, and one of these ones, ground, clip it down, just like that, so that uh, gives us uh, power to our USB thing now, so that's all done. Next cable you've got is your like, factory, so I, I did get this start, so I thought I said this was a DAB antenna, but I was wrong, it's not. This one here will actually be the factory USB uh, port, so you just uh, clip your adapter into there, like so, that's going to retain the factory USB port, which is down in your uh, like center console there, so it'll retain that one. Um, there's like a second one in your kit, which is not like needed, you can tell like, just like look in here, this is like a four pin one, and the other one was a funny looking plug one, um, so you can tell which one you need. Now you've got our two USB ones, so obviously our uh, CarPlay plus Android Auto, you can choose, so this is going to put CarPlay plus Android Auto uh, into this one, so it's up to you if you want that on like on your factory USB or the, like the USB we've put in. So I'm going to put CarPlay Android Auto onto the, the factory USB and I'll just put our, like, our other one onto that USB. So wherever that cable was, here it is here. It's our two USBs all tidied up and obviously this here is going to plug into the back of our auxiliary. Now external microphone, uh, we've done some testing that seems to be better with, without it at the moment. Um, just with the technology of our wireless CarPlay and stuff. So we suggest just like leaving it out. Or you can even do a test yourself just with the head unit like sitting up here of the car running and just try and call people uh, one with it in and like one with it out and see what's better. Now we can pretty much put the head unit all back in. Now I'll tidy things up, you can I'll tape it up a bit, but we don't suggest going too hard with the tape because you obviously want it to sew, I'll, I'll, I'll sit down like, nicely. But you can obviously just tidy things up a bit. Obviously if it's a plug you're not going to be like using, you can tape that up out of the way if you like. I'll just tuck it out of the way. Um, this comes out of here like that. These we're not using. I'll make sure that little uh, reverse one's unplugged. It says like orange and it has reverse on it. It should be unplugged. If it's like not, you might just get like an issue when you go into reverse and you just have to unplug it and it will be, it'll be okay. Rightio, we can put the head unit all back in now. As you pick it up, we can throw in our extra third USB. Might as well just like obviously leave it hanging in the back. Some people don't like obviously use like some people do. A majority would be for our dash cam or our 4G dongle. Those it's quite handy. These again can only go in where they fit into but obviously it could fit into a smaller hole so just obviously check you put them in the right spots. We've got our Wi-Fi antenna here goes onto this side. Stood it up hand tight and then you have your GPS over here and then we've obviously got our main plug and our Make sure we lift them all up, plug into here, and the main plug into here, and then as you tuck the wires all back in, you kind of like lift them up and they tuck down behind that sort of, obviously like bar there, um, you can see they all fit in quite nicely when it all goes in. Now we always hold it there and just do another test to be sure, because you don't want to have forgotten something. It's pretty easy to pull back out obviously, but it's handy just to get it correct the first time. So check, obviously, sound, steering wheel controls, that's cool. Chuck it into reverse, awesome, have our camera coming up. It's all good. You can see that uh, the sensors are off there, just because I turned them off on here. 
So that is everything checked and we are happy with that. So we can actually push the unit back in. So again, just go around and it all clip. Obviously, I like to slide back in there as you push it in, and it all fits pretty flush, just like the factory one. Then also, I didn't actually like check it then, but I do check a USB with a cable that it is going to charge your phone um, on this one because there's no like light or anything to tell you that's like working. So do just check that USB that we put in, just in case the connection wasn't like, solid. And obviously, aircon goes back in, plug that in like so. Probably best to do it with the car off, and then slide that back in, and you'll see. Basically, factory fit install, uh, good job there, all done. So good job, that's the ins install all done. So you can see it's oh, fairly oh, straightforward. So obviously once it's installed, majority of like, people, you'll uh, pair your phone to Bluetooth. We have a few videos on that, but basically you'll search for your phone and join it. And then keep an eye on your phone, because if it's like an like Apple phone, it'll ask you want to use CarPlay, you say yes. Um, and it'll start being able to use a, a wireless CarPlay. And if it's an Android phone, up here to your phone. And then uh, you normally have to restart your phone depending on the Android phone. And then it should hook up to CarPlay. Obviously like SpeedPlay here is your um, Android Auto and CarPlay. So so that will come, come up by default, change only when your phone's not connected. So when you jump on your phone, this will hook up. That's about it. Navigation comes in there. Um, you've got all your apps on here. If you want to download extra apps, you go to the Play Store, sign in. Talks for your OBD to a scan tool, so you just need to like, join it over Bluetooth and join to that. Because obviously, if you come into your apps here, control settings are like we had before when we went to the things. Um, sometimes only some of these settings will work, depending on your model. But those are your settings like you had before. Um, and the other one with vehicle info is your vehicle info. Um, so this will bring in slowly, but you can see obviously if indicators are on or headlights are on, all that comes on like that. You see the headlight like dims as well when the lights come on. All this other information, obviously your fuel information will come in, our teeth bits of information won't come in, and obviously it's not a hybrid, so that information won't come in. Pretty much on basically everything, and you can go and have a plane now and enjoy your new head unit.